All right, guys, well, welcome back to the channel and my ongoing series of me learning how to cast. And this is an old part from the last video where I tried to do a spray foam mold for lost foam. You can see I had a two-piece uh, mold. None of this worked out. It's from the last episode. Here's me trying to pull it apart. God damn it. That didn't work. Oh, that's why, because I'm stupid. Yep. So I started over. Instead of doing lost wax, I was going to do a, a board to pull two pieces off of. I don't know the words for this stuff, honestly. Okay, so here's what I've done. I printed out um, kind of like a block, a three-piece block with a key. Basically, it goes in there. It's got a space that's exactly the thickness of this board, which is three-quarters inch. So when you press it down, it actually sandwiches like just a little bit, pinching it. I've cut a hole in this board and I've drilled it to match my plates. So I got these two holes here and they actually received the pins for these guys which match here. So this board is going to go inside of this guy. Right? Uh, something like that. Uh, something like There we go. So that slides on. And you can see you put another pin in here and it always lines up the same. This also slides in. This pin does not fit in anymore. What the heck happened? What the heck? The hole moved? The hole must have moved. Yeah, I guess the hole moved. I have to drill another one. Weird. It doesn't usually happen, but you know, sometimes it does. Sometimes it'll happen. Just the whole just moves. Weird. Yeah. Really having a go at it, huh? There we go. Okay, so. Yeah. Whatever. It's not moving. It's fine with me. Okay, so this hole basically takes this shape and it projects both sides with the three quarter inch gap. So I've got a three inch draft all along these inside surfaces. It's really rough right now, but I'm gonna sand it up and then spray it with some super high gloss. Um, this kind of smooths everything over. This is the inside surface, so not terribly concerned about how that looks, but you don't want it to grab it when you try and pull the draft out or the sand out. This side, I'm definitely gonna sand this. I'll probably sand it, primer it, sand it, spray it, and then whatever's left, I'll just sand it off. So. My only concern is I have about um, a tenth of an inch there with no draft, essentially, but there is a fillet on top, so uh, I think the gloss will actually probably fill it the inside of that. We'll probably get some flashing across there, and I'll have to post-machine it. But, yeah, so pretty cool. little keyway. Make sure you, you get it wrong. You know, you have 50-50 chance of getting it right. The holes actually tell you which way it's supposed to go. So I'll basically glue this into this hole. And then, uh, yeah, we'll try and pull a mole off of it. Pretty awesome. So it took me a really long time to um, get these all prepped up. I thought it'd be pretty easy to just spray paint it, but the layer lines kept showing up. And um, PETG has a lot of these kind of like strings that come across. So I had to do some internal filing, uh, pretty important for pulling the mold out um, so you don't get it hung up. Here I'm just applying some more primer for sanding and it's pretty cold out. so. Just heating up the bottom of the can. Actually, this is the high gloss. Um, you can see here, trying to get a, a light coat, um, and then it kind of go to heavy. It's important to kind of push those little electrons um, within the paint into certain areas, so you kind of got to guide them with your electromagnetic. Super important. But yeah. Finger pads. And you can see I was talking about the fillet, kind of filled it in. My wife is actually a professional cake decorator, um, so I figured I'd whip out some of her tools and allow her to create this fillet. And there's actually epoxy with some fillers at Max GPE, just some cheap stuff on eBay for right now. And you can see we just kind of filled it around the edges there so we can get a nice little fillet so it would pull up from the sand without grabbing any, any other overhangings. Oh, 
She happy. And now everything's pretty much prepped and it's ready to be put into a sand mold. So I actually splurged and I went and I had bought some Petra Bond, which is a oil impregnated, super fine grain sand. It's almost like um, kinetic sand, except a little, it smells like oil. <laughs> but you can see here I'm, I'm making the pour basin and I'm just kind of pushing the sand in as hard as I can and I'll be mashing it with a hammer. So I'll let the video speak for itself here. And you can see some of these black marks in the sand there. That's actually um, an old pour. Some of the burnt petrifano. I was trying to mix it up, but I think there was some clumps in there. So I'm going to have to do a better job cleaning out my petrifano or at least trying to mix that back in. Actually, if you guys know, let me know. Am I supposed to pull out all the burnt petrifano or do I just crumble it up and mix it back in? That's a question I have for you. If you know, let me know. And so at this point, this is pretty um, worrisome. This is kind of where you separate the mold. And I wasn't too worried about that very short one. So I kind of just grabbed and yanked on it. You see it came right off. Absolutely beautiful. Pretty stoked on that. But this part, this was the three degree draft, deep draw. Give a little tap, maybe shake it loose. And it feels like it's doing pretty good, but you never know until you actually get it off. And... Looks good to me. And this is for the filler and the vent. I'll just take a pipe and I push it right in there. This Petrobon's amazing to work with. It's so soft, you just give it a twist and it fills up the tube and it comes right out. I lost my spoon. Where's my spoon? I lost my spoon. So, I had to go into the house and get a spoon. It was nighttime, I'm trying to be as quiet as possible. Grab the crappiest spoon I could find in there, basically. Yoink. It's 
spoon. And here I'm just carving out the uh, passages that go from the vent and the pour spot into the part. I kind of just chose a random spot there. Probably wasn't the best location, but I figured it might probably work. And you can see I've taken out that board that had the pieces on it. And by taking it out, there's now a void inside of that that the aluminum will fill into. You need to find a better way to attach those because you can see it cracked there when I went to flip it, which is super dangerous, honestly. And here I'm just putting the pour spout on. And I like to put a little bit of sand around the edges there because I have had some instances where the aluminum will pour out from that if it's not a complete seal. So it just makes me feel better, honestly. And here I'm just doing a vent, which is an old can. I've cut the bottom off and I'll just cut a big hole in the center of that. And I'm probably not doing the best job of keeping this whole thing clean of debris. I should be spraying it out. But lessons learned. It's good to watch it again after I do it anyway. Look at that, it's a thing of beauty. It's just a bunch of sand, but inside of there is just like air that's shaped in the part you want. And once again, the aluminum is, I think, 1600 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere around there. And I'm just pouring it until I can see it come up the vent. And that core basin gives you enough weight to really push the air out of the, out of the voids. It's so hot on my pants. Just another shot of it. Nice and slow, steady. The core basin uh, keeps the turbulence down and allows the aluminum to flow in a little bit better. Stupid birds. Then here's the part. I've already cut the sprue uh, in the vent off. You can see there's a, it was right on the side there. Kind of annoying to clean up, but I'll do some close up shots here and show you the surface quality, which is great because you can still see some of the 3D print lines, which was sanded and painted. Awesome. And I'm pretty stoked on it. I've cleaned it up. Basically took it to the belt sander and just cleaned up the outside. It's going to go right on that little motorcycle. And if you guys don't know, these are soft jaws and the 3D printer is amazing. Because I printed these out to put this piece in the mill to cut the slots out. And they're just, they're great. They just hold the part in there. Awkward shapes. Basically 3D printed soft jaws. I love, we are living in the future. It's so awesome. So here, just doing some machining, you can see the surface quality is just so bad. This part is so soft. So the next couple things I'm going to do is working on some home heat treatment stuff. And um, yeah, that's a, a longer process. So those videos might not come out um, for a long time, but I have built an oven and everything. So that's kind of where we're at. This, I, I consider this a very successful experiment. I'll be using this to move on to the next stuff. And hopefully my line of finger pants will come out soon. Um, you'll be able to order on the website. Thanks, guys. Subscribe, comment. Love you.